What's up, YouTube and wrestling fans? This is Reason Reason back once again with my part two of my TNA 09 Turning Point review. Now this is the third or fourth time I try to record this. YouTube is getting really annoying with their uh, publishing errors when I'm trying to publish a video. So let's hope we can get this through this time. All right, first of all, we ended up uh, part one. I believe we left off on the uh, Team 3D and Rhino versus Matt Morgan. Uh, I'm sorry, versus Matt Morgan, Supermax, and the Pope. Sorry about that. My handwriting is kind of sloppy. And that match was, like I said, it was a very good match. Uh, very good chemistry between Team 3D and Rhino, the ECW uh, veterans. Very good match. I'm going to give that one a 3.5 out of 4 stars. It was a good tag team match. Good action. Team 3D really, really plays the heel role good. Okay, moving on from there, we got the no disqualification Scott Steiner versus Bobby Lashley. Falls count anywhere match. This match was originally a one-on-one -on -one match, but due to the violent nature of Scott Steiner's attack on Bobby Lashley on last impact, you know, they, they bumped it up to a no disqualification match. Didn't think much was going to come out of here, and a little bit more came out of here than I thought was, but it wasn't amazing. I'll give it a, a three and a half out of four as well. You know, you had some good uh, brawling, took it all over the arena, took it backstage, took it to the Spanish announce table. Scott Steiner looked phenomenal again for the third straight pay-per-view in a row. People were actually chanting his name, chanting for the Frankensteiner. He gave it to him, gave him a bunch of suplexes. I'd say Scott Steiner looked better than Bobby Lashley did in this match. And it ends up with uh, Scott Steiner bumping Bobby Lashley across the head with a steel pipe by the Spanish announce table. One, two, three, Scott Steiner wins. Again, three and a half out of four stars. Okay, two matches of the night. These last two matches I'm about to talk about, matches of the night. Kurt Angle versus Desmond Wolf. I'm going to just say the rating, and then I'll explain why. Five stars. Five out of five. Amazing. Best wrestling match TNA or anyone has shown fans in years. Okay, Kurt Angle and Desmond Wolf. Desmond Wolf, first of all, has like more submission moves in his arsenal than the entire WWE roster has talent. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put that out there. I'm not trying to be a punk or insult WWE. I'm just saying how good the guy is. He really has more moves than I've seen WWE. He has more submission moves, more more moves in his arsenal that I saw in the first seven to ten minutes of this match than I've seen on an entire raw broadcast. Okay? So that's just to show you right there. Kurt Angle, again, best wrestler alive. They had such good chemistry, back and forth, reversals, good sequences going in and out of their moves. You had a couple of spots, like, uh, first of all, you had one where uh, Desmond Wolf was going to hit that, that lariat on Angle, and when Angle turned around, he just ran and hit Desmond Wolf with the, with the same lariat. He, he got Desmond Wolf with his own move. You had uh, one where Desmond Wolf was going to try to do that, that RKO-looking move, that diamond cutter off the top rope, and as he was setting it up, Angle rolled down and got him in the ankle lock. You had, uh, bro, you had both both uh, wrestlers hit their finishing moves only to get two counts. I mean, this was a 20-minute-plus match, bro. It was a nice, long wrestling classic, not rushed. Every moment was amazing. I mean, I knew Kurt Angle was going to win because the buildup for the match was horrible. But even though I knew he was going to win, there's a few moments where I was like, yo, I think he's actually going to lose. Like, oh, my God, look, he's going he's gonna to get pinned. I mean, it was really good, man. Good submission wrestling, um, just two prime athletes. Prime competitors, prime wrestlers going at it the only the, in a way that only TNA could provide. I mean, just a great match, man. I mean, you had angle slam reversals. You had, I think I think at one point, angle went for that moonsault that he did and took a hard bump. I mean, it was just a great match. You know, the match told the story of how bad Kurt Angle wanted to beat this guy. And in the end, he did. Uh, he strapped on the ankle lock. Uh, for like the fifth time and the dude was gonna grab the ropes and then Kurt Angle took his arm and put him in an arm bar and when he tried to put him in the arm bar Desmond Wolf had his arms hooked like that trying to you know resist it trying to break the hold so then Kurt Angle took his leg and wrapped it around his head so he had Desmond Wolf's arm and his head being choked out by his legs kind of like that movie Undertaker used to do the red triangle or the triangle of death or dark triangle whatever he called it and as soon as he hooked that on tap out Kurt Angle wins Five star match, phenomenal. If you can YouTube it, I don't know what's on. I don't know if it's on YouTube. I don't know what you gotta do to see the match, but do it. Order the replay, buy the DVD when it comes out. Go to TNAVolt.com whenever they get it uploaded. Either way, this pay per view was as good as it was in part because of this match. Amazing match, five out of five stars. Wrestling classic. Then we had the main event of the evening. AJ Styles, the champion, defending against Samoa Joe and against Christopher Daniels. Uh, and in, in short, 
AJ Daniels and Joe Two from 2005. Now I didn't think it was gonna live up to the hype, and I, I'm I'm gonna be real, it did not live up to the expectations of that glorious match. But it was a very good match, very good. And again, I'm not hating. People know that I can't stand Samoa Joe, but I'm gonna be real. This match was as good as it was because of Joe. I mean, I'm sorry, not because of Joe, because of Daniels and because of AJ. Joe really didn't do much. Ro Joe just played the brute force role, you know, double clothesline here, a Bronco Buster there. That's about it. His little whack, his whack little punching combo that he does in the corner, garbage. Um, AJ Styles was phenomenal, man. The guy did a, a spinning corkscrew backflip suicide dive to knock them both out on the outside. He had one spot where he was on the outside and Joe was sticking his head through the ropes to grab him. And on the outside, he did like a, I think it was the Pele. He did the Pele, knocked Joe out right there. Uh, had another move. Uh, he had he had that springboard uh, flying flying form that that flying form off the off the ropes that he usually does. I'm sorry, my son turned on the TV and I'm just trying to fix this over here, but whatever. Here you go. And uh, you know, so Joe um, AJ had a bunch of great moves. Daniels was the one that to me really looked impressive. He looked amazing. I thought Daniel. I was actually hoping that Daniels would come out of this match with the title, win it kind of in a heelish manner. You know, so that you can set up that feud between him and AJ that we know is coming. We know it's basically here. And and, and and the way that Christopher Daniels is starting to express himself kind of as a heel, kind of for some reason, personality-wise, not talent, because I think he's ten times more talented than the, than the dude I'm about to mention. But personality-wise, I think it comes, comes across as the Randy Orton character, which I really want to see in TNA. Because I, I can't stand Randy Orton. I think he's horrible talent-wise, but I like the character. I like the, the, the you know... The heel that's that vicious, and I can see Daniels as that. And there was a couple of flashes in this match where we saw that. I mean, Daniels had a move where he had Joe in a DDT, and then AJ came running, and then he hooked AJ in a rock bottom, and he dropped them both. He had another move. He did his best moonsault ever. He had another move where he had AJ in a in a in a Boston Crab on top of Samoa Joe while he had him in a Camel Clutch. I mean, this match had really good back and forth action, primarily due to AJ and and Daniels just being as great as they are. Awesome match, awesome spots. The match ends with AJ Styles retaining his title when Samoa Joe is laid out, as he should be, and Daniels hits his best moonsault ever. He lands on him, and as soon as he hits it, AJ springboards off the ropes and does that 450 splash, crashing down on Daniels and Joe. One, two, three, he pins Joe, which Joe should be pinned. I love it. AJ retains his title, and I think, and at the end of the match, Joe was furious, and Daniels was saying, you haven't proved anything, you haven't proved anything, so you know we're going to get some Christopher Daniels-AJ feud, which is what TNA needs, so awesome match, that's a four and a half star out of five stars, so you got, in this pay-per-view already, which I thought was going to be garbage, um, I'm admitting it, I was wrong, I thought it was going to be horrible, you had Amazing Red and Homicide, which is four out of five stars, you had... Beer Money, The Brits, and The Motor City Machine Guns, which I believe I gave four four stars or three and a half. No, I think I gave it four stars. So you got those two four-star matches there. Then you got Kurt Angle and Desmond Wolf, which was a five-star match. Classic. And then you had TNA, uh, Title, AJ, Joe, and Daniels, four and a half stars. So you got one, two, two four-star matches, a four and a half-star match, and a five-star match, quality-wise, in this pay-per-view that I thought was going to be horrible. This pay-per-view gets if you want a number rating it gets an eight and a half out of ten if you want a star rating it gets a four stars out of five it is a very good pay-per-view turning point oh nine one of the best pay reviews i've seen in a long time i thought it was gonna be garbage i was not looking forward to it at all i was not hyped for it at all ordered it anyways and i gotta say tna delivered i don't know if it was that speech that dixie carter gave everybody on that impact telling them to step up their game that there's change coming but everybody put on a show the machine guns were amazing amazing red and homicide were off the chain of uh, the Brits beer money and and uh, and the motor machine guns awesome uh, <laughs> only thing that really dampened this paper me were the knockout matches they were not entertaining at all but even still Tara jumped off a 15-foot cage when was the last time you saw a knockout do that or a knockout or a diva do that she did it uh, Scott Steiner Bobby Lashley was whatever man Kurt Angle and Desmond Wolf took it to the limit and then AJ Styles Joe and Daniels were just phenomenal so great pay-per-view hope you guys order it enjoy it and uh, that's it, man. Like I said, four stars out of five, eight and a half out of ten, however you want to put it. Phenomenal pay-per-view. God bless.